Wow, what a night. What a gathering. Gathering of great friends, all part of the Bush family. Just look out there and see so many that have been part of um, what we've been all about over the last many, many years. I even saw a few people that were part of the 1978 campaign. So, <laughs> really thank you with great admiration and affection for each and every one of you. I just can't thank you for the support that you've given the Bush Center, the Bush uh, family over the years. I'm going to tell you that without your support, uh, we just couldn't be doing the good work at the Bush Center that we are. I want to go back a year ago, we uh, launched a capital campaign called a Charge to Keep. And I know that many of you have heard this story, but I want to just spend a little time talking about a charge to keep and, and what it really stands for. In 1995, at the First United Methodist Church in Austin, Texas, inauguration of the 46th governor of the state of Texas, the song, the song A Charge to Keep was sung. The hymn is authored by Charles Wesley in 1762. 14 years before the Declaration of Independence. The first two stanzas of the hymn are these. A, char a charge to keep I have, a God to glorify, a never dying soul to save and fit it for the sky, to serve the present age, my calling to fulfill. Oh, may it all my powers engage to do my master's will. So my calling is to use all my powers to do my master's will. Through the years, the governor and his president, he hung that painting in his office when he was in Austin and in Washington, D.C. It was kind of interesting that uh, friends of the president and Laura actually owned the painting. So he was able to hang it in those offices as a reminder of the enduring values that that song refers to. I want to I want to take just a moment. People love stories. So I'm going to tell you a quick story. In the 2000 campaign, when we were starting to lay out the the plan and what we we're going to do, the president made one thing very clear to us. Then candidate, then governor, made one thing very clear to us: that he traveled the world. He wanted to see people that were hurting. He wanted to see people that were in need. He wanted to get out there and tell those that he cared about them. And so every stop we made along the way, almost every stop, when you go to cities, we'd go to a, whether it be a dilapidated housing project, whether it be in the underserved area of the city, or I remember one specific stop we made, it was an African-American community and it was an area that was infested with drugs. And we went into a church, and it was a church that probably could seat 200 people or so, but there weren't many in there, maybe 30 ladies. And they were hurting, and they were hurting because they're worried about their children and their grandchildren. And so then Governor Bush looked at these ladies and listened to them for about an hour. And then he gave them, he told them, you know, I'm going to do what I can to help you. Know that I'll be praying for you. As we left there, David Bloom, who was a reporter for NBC, came up to me. And he had noticed this pattern of the president and then governor wanting to go to areas of these cities where people were hurting. And David said to me, he said, you know, this isn't what I expected to see. And he was talking about see on the campaign, how we were going to conduct the campaign. And I said to him, well, David, you don't know him as well as I know him. And then you fast forward to his time in office, 2003. He's president of the free world. You've got to leave the free world. You've got to show the whole world all you, but you care about them. 
And as Jan was talking about earlier, he looked at Africa and he saw millions and millions in danger, dying over there. And so he said, we're not going to stand for this. We're going to do something bold. We're going to do something big. And that, of course, led to PEPFAR. People then said to me, you know, I don't think I expected this out of a Republican president. And I said to them, well, you don't know him like I know him. So people started to catch on and really start to see the values, the enduring truths that have guided his life. And I just would say to each and every one of you here tonight, by your presence here, you're also saying that you treasure the enduring truths of life, the virtues and the values that make this country the strong country that we're all so proud of. So I would just say, as we work together at the Bush Institute and we continue to uh, our programs and both here at home and yes, around the world, I think all of us will feel good about the fact that we're honoring our charge to keep. Inspired by the compassion work of leadership of President Bush, the George W. Bush Medal of Distinguished Leadership was created to recognize those who have made an impact on the global community and have inspired others to do the same. The medal is given to the individuals who have demonstrated a sustained commitment to a cause and has become a model for which others are measured. I will tell you that the George W. Bush presidency was an example of effective and compassionate leadership, as is his life, based on a strong moral compass, a unwavering set of core principles of principle and trust and honesty and integrity, hard work. A measure of an individual is the life with a caring spirit and a humble heart. These truths, these truths are at the very heart and soul of President Bush. I have witnessed this for the so many miles that we have traveled together. And he has inspired all of us by living out his life, defined by the biblical message that to whom much is given, much is required. Please help me to welcome my friend, your friend, to, this, to the stage. Yeah, thank you all. Thank you. Please be seated. Uh, thank you all for coming, Don. Thank you for your kind remarks. I love Don Evans. He's a longtime friend and damn good Secretary of Commerce, by the way. And I want to thank uh, Ken Hirsch and Holly and their team for uh, being such good stewards of your money and uh, making sure that our programs are effective and long-lasting, which I hope by now you realize they will be. They are because we're getting good results, and they are because they're principally principled-based programs. Uh, uh, I want to thank our longtime supporters as well uh, for remembering us. I know there's a lot of demands on your time and your money, and uh, we're, we're just happy to be a part of it. I uh, want to thank, uh, congratulate Jan. I mean, that girl can speak. <laughs> Damn. Have you ever thought about running? Uh, anyway, congratulations. You probably won the speakers contest when you're in high school. Uh, I uh, am proud and unbelievably pleased that the Gateses have joined us. Uh, this is a big deal uh, to be able to honor them, I think. 
not only have they been unbelievably successful in the business world, but in my mind, more importantly, they're successful in the giving world. They uh, ascribe to the belief that all life is precious and that we're all God's children. And therefore, when you see suffering, ignorance, bad health, that if you're in a position to do something about it, you have a moral obligation to do so. And man, they, they got after it. They not only uh, can talk the issue, they uh, have produced amazing results as a result of their generosity and their skills. So uh, as Donnie mentioned, the Medal for Distinguished Leadership is to be given. Laura's going to come up, and I'm going to ask the Gates to come up to two uh, very deserving recipients and people who honor us by their presence. Thank you for coming.